Hello. Welcome once again. In this video series, you learn how to develop wonderful games using Unreal Engine 5 and its blueprint visual scripting, from the single node to the most complex function. In the previous video, we started by introducing you to the Unreal Engine editor and blueprint graph. In this video, we will discuss the variable types and their usage. Please like this video if you find it helpful and informative, and subscribe to our channel for newer updates and game development tutorials. So let's start. There are many different types of variables available for use within your blueprint scripts. Each type of variable holds a different type of data, and it will be important for you to have at least a basic understanding of what the primary data types are. First we will create another blueprint class and, we will just go ahead and open this up dot and then we will go straight to the event graph inside of here. We will show you how to create the different types of variables. So if we go down to the bottom left hand corner you can see we've got variables at the moment we just have a default scene root. However we can add new variables by clicking on the plus sign. By default it will make it a boolean, and you get to choose the name. We will just change the name of this to test. Now if you to the right side of the window along and you go over to details. You can see you've got variable name and then you've got a variable type. Variable type is the most important bit, as you can change it to a whole bunch of different types of variables. Typical data types are boolean, integer, float, and so on. And more complex reference types are objects, actors, and custom classes. Each type has a unique color for easy identification. Let's see the variable types in their color and their description with example. First is boolean, this is red colored. So a boolean is basically a true or false value. You can set it to be on or off, like a switch, true or false, whatever and you can also check to see if something is true, using like a branch node. Next is byte, which is dark green in color. Byte takes numbers from 0 to 255. This is the smallest data type in terms of spaces, only one byte of memory. The next one we are going to work with is an integer. The integer number this essentially allows you to store some kind of number like in the scoring system. This cyan in color. Integer values which are also numbers without decimals. This ranges from minus 32768 to 32767. Integer is used to store values such as amor, lives, and collected items. So let's go ahead and set up a basic event inside of our blueprint actor. So right now what we will create a quick box. We will use some normal cube and then create a box collision. This way we can detect when the player actually touches it. Now we will go over to the blueprint event graph, and then from here we are going to go ahead and create our events for begin overlap for collision. Once we got this basic collision, we can actually go ahead and do some event. So here we are going to drag our BP underscore first in into the scene. Just like this so we can actually see what we are working with. So let's add boolean and print string. This is going to allow us to display the string onto the screen. Just go ahead and drag the variable into the screen. And get and you can use either get or set. So gets allows you just to receive the variable, and then hook it up into another node. And set allows you to change it, so if I hook this up and put the end result into the in string, it allows us to convert the variable to a string, and then display it on the screen. So go ahead and press compile, and go and press play. Now as the player hits the box, true word appears on the screen. It's going to tell us what our boolean value is. It's true. That's just quite simple. If we wanted to we could use like a branch node to check the condition, wherever or not a value is going to be true or false. If you don't hook up this value in here, like we did. Just then it's going to stay with that variable, but it's going to set it to true or false. So if we leave it false the way it is right now, press play dive in, and then you hit it it's going to be false. If we set the set value to true, it's going to change it to true and so on and so forth. And that essentially allows you to turn it on and off quite easily. And you might want to do this for stuff like doors, or whatever and you want to do, where it's only be able to trigger it once. You might use a boolean value to do that. You can use the branch node. Now change the text in string as hit, instead of hello, and press play. 
Now as the player hits the ball, hit word appears on the screen. Otherwise not. Now we are going to work with our integer. It's the most simple. Let's go ahead and click that and name the variable as integer and compile it. So that way can change the default value to 1. So let's say we wanted to change our increment it. We wanted to multiply it divide it or whatever we can do that quite easily. So the way to do this is just go ahead and drag the variable into the screen. And get and you can use either get or set. So gets allows you just to receive the variable and then hook it up into another node. And set allows you to change it. So let me show you that. So if we go to get, we've got this basic variable holder. It's just a value and set will actually change it. And we can hook this up to the event. So let's go ahead and do this. So if we drag it up to the begin overlap. And then the set we need to hook up. And we'll test some kind of maths function. So let's go ahead and do that. Just drag it out and we're going to type in integer plus integer. This will allow us to add a number. We got integer with division multiply and minus. If I wanted to add an integer to an integer to that, I can do quite easily. So at the top here you have your initial value. So that's going to be test 1. And then you got what you want to add to it. So it's going to be something like 2. So now each time we go ahead and collide with that box is going to change the value by 2. It's going to add 2 to the initial value. So let's just go ahead and check that. And it's going to go type in print string. This is going to allow us to display the string onto the screen. So if I hook this up and put the end result into the in string. It allows us to convert the integer to a string and then display it on the screen. So go ahead and press compile go and press play. And now let's go ahead and walk into it. So moment we hit the sphere. It once it says 3 hit it again. It will says 5, then 7, then and it's going up by 2, each time the initial value, once the sphere ice hit, so on and so forth. But you should be able to get the general picture, that how the basic integers work. That's pretty simple really you know you can try out the other functions like, divided or multiply or minus and so on and so forth. But for now that's pretty much all we want to show you for integers. Next one is float, which is light green in color. Float values in numbers with decimals. More accurate than integers as it has a precision of 7 digits and is used, for example, to store the radius of a sphere, or the damage taken by an enemy, or any value that should contain decimal numbers. Next is name, which is colored violet. Name is the lightweight system for using string. It is case insensitive and cannot be manipulated. Similar to the byte, it is the smallest data type and is used to store keywords and indices. Next variable is string. This is colored magenta. String is the only string class that allows manipulation. A string essentially allows us to hold a line of text. It allows us to contain text and then we can put whatever text we want to put to see down here. It is more expensive than the other two text data. However, strings can be searched, modified, and compared against other strings. Next is text. This is pink in color. Text represents a display string. It is used to store object descriptions, times, numbers, and any formatted text. It is typically used in a table for the localization system and cannot be manipulated. Next one is vector. Vector yellow colored. Vector contains an array of three float values and is typically used to store positions on three-dimensional space, x, y, z, or color information, r, g, b. Next one is rotator, which is purple colored. This is similar to vector, it stores an array of three float values that contains the rotation of an object in a three-dimensional space, in the order, roll, pitch, and yaw. Last one is transform, which is orange in color. Transform combines translation, rotation, and scale of a three-dimensional object. Apart from these default data types, there are tons of other custom data types and we will see how to create our custom ones further in the video series. These types can be regrouped in five categories. First is structure, struct, value, types. A structure is a container of custom variables. It is used to group related variables in a single entity in order to simplify data combining and data management. Second is references to objects or actors. As the name suggests, these data types are references of any object, actor in the game. They are useful when we want to communicate between two different blueprint classes. Third is references to interfaces. They are the same as object pointers. However, they are referred to as interfaces objects. 
Fourth is references to classes, similar to object references, this type of variable contains references to a class. The main difference is that this type points to the default class, while the object reference points to a single instance of this particular class in the game. Next is enumeration, an enumerator is basically a byte variable that, instead of numbers, has a human readable list of names. It can be used to store any kind of object state or type, game states, tree types, weapon types, player states, and so on. Now let's see what public and private variables are. This variable has been made public, meaning that it will be editable within the details panel while the blueprint actor is selected. On the right is a similar setup, but with the other variable remaining private. This means that in order to change the variable value, one would need to open up the blueprint script for the actor and change the default setting for the private variable, or change it some other way as a part of the script's functionality. Making a variable public simply requires that you check its editable property, or click the eye icon next to a variable's name in the My Blueprint window. Once a variable is editable, the eye-shaped button next to it will highlight yellow. This indicates that although the variable is publicly editable, it has no tooltip which may confuse some users. To remedy this, enter a description in the variable's tooltip property. Once this is done, the eye-shaped button will appear green. Hope from this video, you will start to move into building in more advanced mechanics, in an easy to follow step by step approach, which will allow you to play around and build your own content, to eventually build your own game. Thanks. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.